Get ready for the greatest roast of all time. The Roast of Tom Brady. A Netflix live event happening May 5th. Hosted by Kevin Hart, the seven-time world champion gets his cleats held to the fire by famous friends and frenemies on an unforgettable night where everything is fair game. Tune in on May 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific time for The Roast of Tom Brady, live only on Netflix. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not and, as uh, simple you know, like, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And welcome to an Anfield Index transfer special, ladies and gents. We know the season's not quite over. There's three games left of Jurgen Klopp's reign. But naturally, attention's turned into the next stages, aren't they? Liverpool 2.0, Liverpool 3.0, as some people are even calling it, I saw today. Transfers, Arnie Slot, many things to discuss. And in a bit of a hybrid, you could even call it an inverted style pod. We're mashing up, ladies and gents. We've got the transfer show from myself. And we've got one of the UP lads on. We've got, and uh, Dan Kennett will kill me if I don't say this, Dr. Phil Barter, or Bart, as he's also known. Bart, how are we on this Saturday? Not bad, mate. Not bad, not bad. Well, I hope so, because you're going to be giving us a raft of stats and expertise. Because, ladies and gents, players galore are getting linked. And whether you put much, you know, weight into either things, whether you look at the stats, we're going to get into it all. And we're going to get into it all quite quickly. Quickly. So we're going to be looking at players you'll know, players you'll heard of, and giving our take on it as well. I mean, Bart, we'll go general for the Storms, the holistic approach. I mean, it's going to be a big change. We know this new head coach. We know about Edwards, Hughes, we'll find all, all the change of structure. Let's look at the team first of all. And I know you and the UP boys will have talked about this in depth. If you look at that squad, and it's obviously coming to the end of the season, there's a lot of things changing. When you look at it, what do you think is needed right now going into that summer? I think there's two things. Um, me personally, I think, and I think we discussed it a lot on the pod, is our fundamental ability not to keep the back door sharp, keep a clean sheet, has meant that, and stop big chances, has meant that mm. we've run out of gas because the, the front end of it, I had to keep scoring, not just one, not you know, better to get two goals and some yeah. three goals to win a game. And that, as we've said recently, you've got no idea how much pressure that puts on them when you keep consistently going behind. You have the added thing of fatigue and the rest of it adds on. So for me, we fundamentally need to get back to clean sheets every single game. Because if you look at the amount of time we've spent in front is is lower than Arsenal and City. If you look at the amount of time we've been chasing games, I think we're up, it's 10, 10, 15% more than Arsenal and Arsenal City. So that just adds in. You can't do that. And as you've seen, we haven't been able to sustain it for a whole season. Yeah. And and there's a there's a reason for that. So for me, it's 
I would focus around the defensive side of the of the team. Um, this there are there are little additions I'd like to do further up, but for me, if you can get back to that golden diamond, which is keeper two set halves and a six, doing what yeah. you need to do, you will prevent a lot of the simple little big chances being created in the first fifteen, that kind of stuff. That but and also enables you to have rest defense and just see out a game. And we haven't got either of those at the moment. There yeah. also is also a fundamental decision to be had, which is: uh, are you playing Trent as a centre mid, or are you playing him as a right back? And that okay. changes what who you sign, right? Because if you're not playing him as right back, you need a you need a right back to compete with Bradley or a first choice. Mm. If you are playing him as right back, then you probably need something a little bit different in midfield, should we say? You know, so they're my pro. I mean, for me, and I said it at the beginning of the season. Um, in the preview pod actually because around the time we were looking at getting Moses and I was like if we sign him I think we're going to go on and win the league and, that, and I, I, I'm on record saying that and we didn't get him we did get a six in yeah. so I, I think I gave a range of 75 to 85 points or something like that uh, and, and the middle middle point is probably where we'll end up something like that so I think for me it, a centre half and a six are the two priorities for me personally I know the other boys are uh, they have the depend. It depends where you want to play Trent. It impacts where you want to go. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, because no, the other the reason I'd go centre half first is that, like you, probably I'm fed up of viewing the team sheet and going, "Oh, can I take the injured?" Yeah, you can't go through a season with your first choice centre half partner not being able to play. You just can't do that. You know, you know, either way was a prime example. We needed Canai in that game. Yeah, he didn't play. Yeah, it's just stuff like that happens and you just need yeah. to have two reliable in you come. Matip's going, you need a replacement in for him to start with BBD. That's your starting pairing and that's they play the big games. So yeah, that, that's for me, that's that's the priorities I would make. I think that'll be it for most people and it's centre-half, six. Might be a few I'm hearing looking at left-back, there's talk about Robbo, isn't there? But yeah, And yeah. They're the wide players, etc. But fundamentally, yeah, like you say, that, that back, that defensive area are absolutely crucial and you kind of alluded to it because there is a debate, and I know this is the a hot one, especially with you, the UP boys, the Salah question, because naturally there's been a lot of talk about Salah, hasn't there? And now yeah, yeah, yeah. David yeah. Ornstein with a big story about contract, Paul Joyce is on it after suggestions, the spy. It's all been a bit dramatic recently. What is if there is one? What is the consensus with the UP boys around Salah? What you do? I think all of us, and we've said it in Discord a few times, is if the price is right, we'd sell him this summer. Uh, and there's a fun, the fundamental change in that is injury. Um, yeah. You can get, like, if he if he was not got through another season injury free, I think a lot of us would be like, do you know what? He's earned the right to choose when he goes. Therefore, yeah. see out his contract, happy days, he, you're a legend. But right now, he's had an injury. He's had a setback because we played him too early. That's our fault. You've now got an injury in an area which you don't want to be having an injury in for an old player. Yeah, Salah's not mm-hmm. young anymore. So that isn't going to get any better. You are not going to be able to get out the same level of minutes and production as you had previously uh, without yeah. having the, the risk of a re-injury. So for me, if the price is right, and I say this with a heavy heart, you know, we all love Mo, right? There's nobody here that doesn't love yeah. Mo. Um, yeah, I would, I would move him on. If the price isn't right, I mean, Edwards will decide that. And fair enough, he's earned the right to sit out his contract and go on a free for me. Yeah, but yeah I think you're right. Everyone will be in the same boat. It's ultimately, he's earned that right, it's most decision. But yeah. if you go logic over heart and the offer's right, there is a decision I think everyone would be making. But we'll have to see. And but there's three players that I want to sort of talk about with, with you because these are the ones that, that keep coming up. We keep seeing mentioned. So we'll go through these one by one. And we'll start with Kudis, West Ham attacker, attacking midfielder, winger, to kind of place in a variety of positions throughout his career with West Ham and Ajax. Now, this is an interesting one, Bart, in the sense is he's been linked with us historically and mm-hmm. the name's coming up again. David Ornstein's almost put him, who's a big name, as we know, from a journalistic point of view, front and centre. I mean, he said that Kudis has a release clause. He said that, you know, Liverpool have been linked historically and you could understand if they were linked again. So he's kind of put that story right up there. I know we've talked about this. There's a lot of sort of takes on Kudus and I'm getting to the stage where I can make a case either way for and against him. So I want to sort of delve into this a little bit. I mean, I know you've run the numbers for us, which I want to get into for everyone who's listening as well. 
what would you say now you've kind of run those numbers? Because we'll go into sort of for and against, but what's the kind of standouts for you now you've run those numbers? I think, so I've run, I mean, I can put this in the the, the pack if you want to, it's not a big problem, but I've run my usual stats pack, but just just him isolated for most of the stuff. There's still some some team stuff in there. And in the passing viz, he seemingly operates in both of uh, jewels and passes in that sort of left half space channel which yeah. is kind of where we need that player to operate in. Um, he's got a high amount of, I would say, uh, jewels in the hot zone, if you like, so where he's pushing yeah. me right on the fullback. Uh, and fairly su- I mean, successful. I mean, successful. Let's just a quick, quick scan of numbers. He only lost three out of about eight, um, either aerial or, or ground jewels, which isn't too bad. Um, yeah. So that's that's decent. Um in terms of his um, his where where he's positioning that and, and how he's taking those players on, again, mm. good good mix up in terms of success and non success. I would say passing is making a pass every other minute on my wave plot. He only took one one shot in the last game, so that's obviously not a great thing to make on. Sure. The other thing to note on this with a lot of these stats is you've got the Moises element, right? West Ham don't yeah. play the same way. So the ball he has is of a lower percentage. They had 35% of the possession. I think it was around that wow. against us. So what he's going to get and what he's got to do in that is different. You know, he the way West Ham play is very low uh, passing chain, so he's involved in it in a fair amount, but they're like one to two. Uh, so not to five in terms of length of pass, which typically ours are like around the five to 10 mark. So that's a little bit different for him to get involved in. But having yeah. said that, if you look at some of the, the, the later images I do around uh, zone 14, left half space and right half space, he is receiving, like they got one progressive pass in left half space, but he received that. You know, um, he also had a lot of his passes in those areas as well. He made carries into those areas in that left half space. The other good thing, which... So I often talks about on UP is he's in the hot zone. You know, if yeah. we go if we get to threat, so the guys will know that I'll I'll do analysis on threat. So for the whole game, which is EPV for me, 55% of his threat creation is in the left hot, hot zone, which is exactly where we want to get to to pull that ball yeah. back in because we're more likely to score from that area. So and the second highest bit is in the, the left hot space. So it's kind of a Hello, I'm here to annoy you. I'm here to annoy you into listening to more of me and more of others on EPL Index. We don't just have the Anfield Index stuff. We've got EPL Index as well, which covers the entirety of the Premier League. And we have three podcasts and a whole bunch of really good writing on EPLindex.com. The podcasts are my own two-footed podcast, which is every day at 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, covering the whole league. We have a Tad Predictable hosted by Tadiwa. You know Tadiwa, he does Anfield Index. He presents a Tad Predictable before every Premier League match week. And then Kevin DeVries and his crew on the EPL Roundtable there every week after the Premier League match week. So make sure you listen to everything we're doing on EPL Index and follow us there on Twitter at EPL Index. Thank you. Bye-bye. He seems to be on that limited amount of possession that he's got from West Ham, creating what we has signs that it could be really effective for us in that area. Yeah, if, it's interesting because you say like if we get him in the right area, and I know people will refer to these stats and they're on the positive side, won't they? And talk about he's got seventeen goals overall, his dribbling, his carries. I get that as well. On the other side, I've seen it as well. And help me out with this stat because the one I see quite referred to is people seem to criticise his XGC and say, oh, 0.29 is pretty low in Premier League games. So for those who aren't versed in that, what are we talking about there? Because that is the one I see hammered against him. Is that the one on f British? Is that the one that yeah. people normally yeah. pull up, don't they, and say, absolutely, what's his, what's his thing? So generally, that's like a combination of his XG and XJ. At, XJ. It's that sort of piece together as a goal contribution model. So... And the key thing with that stat is actually not to look at it for this season. It's better to look right. at it for 
as an overall what has he done for over a period of time so when we when we were looking at Mane and Jota for example they would look at yeah. three year and they would presume that on that trend he would be about to go supernova if he moved to a side that had more possession and, and he upscaled it so they won it through the, the Liverpool Super Cupids that we touched on in the last pod so what you've mm. got to look at with I'm just trying to find him now um, on on his speak is is they've got to assess whether they think there's enough of an upward trend in his figures that given more of the ball, he would develop more and have more output for it. Right. So what you don't want is a Diaz situation where he's actually shooting less than he did at Porto. Right. Yeah. And his, yeah. his output is actually decreased. Now, some of that is injuries in the last year, but mm. what you want is a player to come in and have, be having more of the ball and therefore have increased your output at that trend or exponentially, right? So you don't want it to go up yeah. a little bit. You want it to be like a supernova. So, really? yeah, that's, I would say that there are some signs there that that, that, that is possible. Um, I would, they will plug it into the computer and they'll work it out whether they, they see value in that. Uh, what's the uh, um, release clauses apparently? What was it? What's the rumored release this- clause? Release clause, David Ornstein. This is the I think this will be the big thing that it comes down to. David Ornstein says there's nothing definitive. And I've seen a lot of suggestions that and, and this is the thing where you go anywhere between 50 to 80. My assertion of that, Bart, people are guessing, aren't they? They don't know if Ornstein's saying, I don't know the release clause, but yeah, probably tells me the agent's not shopping it around, shall we say, at the moment that way. Yeah, I it's I would they will know the best. They will generally they'll they'll work it out and they'll be like right okay fair enough. I mean what's his his key passes is one per game which is yeah it's not that's not amazing that's not that's not amazing. I said key mm-hmm. passes where you uh, three players or like a three ball is, yeah. is a key pass. Um, his final third passes is one point two a game per ninety. Um, again not not ideal. Uh, progressive one is making a game so these are all. But the thing you've got to take that account is that tax. He's only got yeah. the ball for thirty percent of the time, or the team have only got it for thirty yeah. percent of the time. Yeah, so that's that's that limits what you can do with it. Yeah, and if you look at his carries, he made it like his carries are a decent amount for someone who hasn't doesn't have a lot of the ball. Uh, there's a carry in every segment of the game, so fifteen minute period, so he's involved in every element. Um and largely in every single segment. So typically he'll do about three carries a segment. Two of them are increasing threat when doing it, not decreasing. So you know it's it, there are Fair some enough. signs there. I would just I think they are going to have to look at it and they'll they have far better knowledge in terms of the supercomputer and work out whether they think they can scale it up and whether there's value in in him or whether they're just going to use it as a smoke screen to get someone else in. Interesting. So it, it kind of a. The Kuda summary, there's probably two points there that stood out for me and what you said. And you can tell me if this is a fair assessment as well. It will come down to almost what level do they evaluate that Moyes tax around, that he's only getting 30-odd percent of possession. When that translates to a Liverpool, as we know, can go around 60, 70 on average. What does that mean in terms of scalable? And then, because like you said, that's the big thing. He does get in that hot zone a lot where we want him to be and obviously he's got those strengths we said like take-ons, jewels, that type of thing so that's going to be the factor. Do you think it will be almost a, sounds strange but that mathematical decision, this is the player value against the release clause it might just come down to that as well? I think it will do, I think with all these things still you don't put that structure back in place to then look at it. The other thing to look at is they'll also take into account his medical. I haven't looked on transfer yeah. markets, so I can tell you that. They'll look at his medical. They'll they'll do an assessment in terms of uh, his personality. That'll also be part of it. And then the scouts will be there as well to actually give it the the eyes, the, the actual real-life eyes mm-hmm. view and go, well, yeah, he does this, he does this, does this. So though all those elements, element, elements will come into it in a holistic decision. Um, and, they'll, and they'll make a call on that. I, I do think if there's another... Then may I think it will come down to the way they normally work is have three players as we know, which yeah. all roughly they believe can scale up, right? And then it will come down to which is the better deal. Um yeah. his age is I think is is in his favor. 
So uh, you've got the the lad at Aliso who's the other winger at Palace, which mm. is another target. Issue with him is some of the injury. Have they gone away or not? And the bank yeah. then that Palace are going to ask for him might not might be slightly out of reach given the fact that they might perceive that as a risk. So those are all things. But I think with this player, I think there are signs there. I generally do. It, it will be how they how they run the how they run the stats to see that is and how the other elements fit into it. But I think it's a he certainly from for me from the EPV looking at his threat. I, I'm pleased to see he's in he's operating in the left half space and hot zone. I think that's that's a good that's a good indicator yeah. that he could have some impact for us. Um, he's probably operating a lot wider than normal uh, left forward would do. Um, normally he's basically where our, our left back is, is where a lot of his threat is, is. So he would just have to tuck inside a little bit more, but that's not something that, so Moisey would generally say, look, Pat, like, you, you play out there, you play out there yeah. because his fullbacks don't attack that much. That's what they do. Whereas for a side, like Liverpool, you've got a load of possession. He's going to be told, and you're more of a, you're not a wide player, you're a wide forward. So we're asking yeah. you to come in and get a shot off more crate in those areas. So it could just be a, a directive. I think some of the stats say that he could move to that, but that would be their decision with it. I think it's got it up. Hello there. Have you ever found yourself getting ready to watch the Liverpool match? You've got your mates around, you've got your drinks, you've got your snacks, you're all set to go. It's going to be a good day. And then you find out, oh, the game's not actually being broadcast in your region. There's the heartbreak, there's rage, there's despair. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not and, as uh, simple you know, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Tennessee just sounds perfect. Whether that's live music, the crack of a campfire, or kids laughing on an adventure. To start planning your trip, visit tnvacation.com. That's tnvacation.com. Tennessee sounds perfect. There's fury. You're upset. You're looking for a solution. Well, we've teamed up with NordVPN to bring you a game-changing solution. That's right. With NordVPN, you can switch your virtual location to a country where the game's on live. It's like having a global ticket to sports, TV shows, and movies from all around the world. And here's the best part. If you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index, you'll score the best discount on your NordVPN plan. Plus, our link gives you four extra months free on the two-year plan. And that's what we call a winning streak. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking, what if it's not for me? What if I don't like it? What if I'm not getting the use of it? Don't worry about it. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's totally risk-free. I've been using NordVPN to catch all the Liverpool matches and TV shows that I'd normally miss out on. It's totally transformed both my weekends and my TV watching. And not only that, not only does it give me access to stuff from all around the world with the click of a button, it keeps all my data safe. It means that the miscreants, the ne'er-do-wells, what my grandmother would have called scallywags, who lurk on the internet to try and steal your information, can't get your information. NordVPN keeps it safe for you. So don't let geo restrictions bench you this season. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index and make sure that you're in the game, no matter when or where it's being played. Remember, it's not just sports, it's your all-access pass to binge-worthy TV shows and blockbuster movies from all around the globe. NordVPN literally unlocks the world for you and keeps you safe from the world. So don't miss out. Head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Anfield Index and let the fun and games begin. Yeah, would just feel that way, doesn't it? Scale it up, didn't yeah. feel he's a, a bit diaz -y. In that sense, not trying to say that as a negative, but no, 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 with no. a scale, Mane. And yeah, he, he's one, I think we're saying, ladies and gents, we wouldn't hang our hat on it, but I wouldn't just dismiss this one either by any means, would you? Just because of the tour that's going around it, realistically. 100%. Brill. Now, 
Moving on to the next one. And for, for any Dutch people listening, you probably guessed me and Bart are not fluent in Dutch. So give us a bit of a pass on this one for the naming conventions job. So we'll call it the, the final captain, the right back. I'm going with Gertrude. My apologies if that's wrong. This one, Bart, I mean, this one's fascinating because he's at the Olympic Stadium in the away end for us. And obviously people do that and go crazy. People go crazy because Arnie Slot's coming and the things and he's the captain and all that. So the link's there. People then like to filter out in true UP style the fact he was actually at the Arsenal Tottenham game the day after. But there's a lot of stories and links and things like that. Probably it's the heat gets turned up again, Bart. There was a, and to be fair, Sam Maguire had this exclusive, didn't he? That Joe Gomez is considering his future, isn't he? That with the changes, maybe looking to to move on closer to London. So that those are where people are making the connection. So I understand that, but we can't go into this as an absolutely solid link, but it's worth exploring. So I'm going to get Bart's take on this one, guys. So let's say Gertruda, whether we're right or wrong. Gertruda, yeah. Let's final order, right back. Well, I'm saying this, Bart's, as well, because this is important context. From what I've seen and the stats and the bits you've sent me, Right back, centre back, left back at times, and defence. You know, he's played a lot of positions for Feyenoord. And yeah. Kenneth's going to kill us if we don't use the phrase air uh, divisie attacks in this summary at some point as well. So, what would be your stats or your call outs around this player specifically? If you look at his, and everyone's got every brief, I know he's public facing data for everybody, so it makes it easy. If you look at his profile for full backs in the last 360, so last year, it gives you his percentiles, right? And he is in. Apart, depending on what you want to look at, right? Okay, so yeah. defensively, he's he's in the lower percentile, should we say? There isn't a percentile over forty-one. Interceptions is forty-one percentile. Mm. But in terms of his pass completion, progressive passes, progressive carries, tackles, assists or tape on sorry touches, and that kind of thing, they're all in the so there's uh, most of those are in the ninety over ninety five percent percentile. Yeah, attacking shot creation actions, which is kind of what you want from your fullbacks, non body XG and and, and um, expected assists is in ninety six percentile. Assists is in seventy nine percentile. Uh, you know, shots eighty one percentile. And in terms of actual XG, so he's taken a shot on, he's in 99th percentile, 98th percentile for non-penalty for fullback. So mm-hmm. the attacking side of it looks good in terms of percentile. The problem okay. with that is there are divisio tax because they are ranked lower than the championship in terms wow. of a league quality. So you, and if you look at the boys that have come, Cody was top of these percentile charts in terms of goal scoring and, and assist actions. And it, and to be fair to the lad off the ball, he he, he does a job, right? He, mm-hmm. And he and he has some elements in some attacking that have been really good, but the output is not in date from what he was doing in in Holland to where he's coming yeah. out, and that is the area division attacks right in front of you. So therefore, then you've got to go back to the defensive. The problem with defensive stats is, yeah. as we always say, you can't measure stuff that doesn't happen. The best defend defending is avoiding a situation to occur. Yeah. And also, he plays with a hugely dominant side. They have a lot of ball, so their impact to do negative transitions, you know, on the on the whole, you're not set. Um, it's just not it's not a a thing that they'll do a lot in games. You know, Sly posted some some great stats, and he was like, mm. "This just comes across as normal." His top speed, I can't remember his top speed was now uh, thirty three point two k for this season, which is Cody speed, Cody quick. So I says, "It's not yeah. super quick." But then that might also be because, again, negative transition for a defender would create sometimes the need to make a high-speed uh, run behind to catch yeah. a player or get back in position. So you may be not asking for that. And if you've got a high amount of dominant possession, you're also not asking to break and play on the counter like we used to do. So there's a bit there that there might be more to come from him in terms of those elements. I mean, on average, um, distance per 90, so I put in there is 9.8K, uh, mm. which we typically we ask 12, we're around 12K for our players to do. But yeah. again, some of that might be down to the fact they have the ball most of the together game. Dominate, yeah. They dominate. It's a weird one. It is a weird one, that one. And yeah, it's just, it, just for analogy, I always think you, the UP boys have made some great analogies there about, you see Van der Ven, the style that Tottenham play, doesn't he? He's going to be playing high up, so he, you're going to see more high speed yeah. sprints you're going to see his top speeds with this guy they're just going to dominate and it 
it's no real way of saying it. Sometimes against crap teams, he's not really going to need to sprint or cover that distance, isn't it? That's the fairest exactly. way to say and it. And he banned a big camp. Is it Germany? Bundesliga he came from, didn't he? Wasn't he? Yeah, was Wolfsburg. Yeah. yeah. So, so that league uh, actually correlates better for the for the. It's not. It's, it's higher ranked than the championship, for example. I think it is, but it's definitely higher ranked than the NBA. So the transfer of players from Germany to England, particularly defenders, as we've seen Canate, is 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 a lot um, more straightforward. Should we say so? You haven't got as yeah. much of a worry, yeah. I think there's still an issue around midfielders from Germany. Um, you've seen the twos and throws of certain come over and not quite had the same impact that it did, and vice versa. But yeah, defenders is certainly more of a solid bet to buy from Germany to, to translate into the UK. So yeah, there's there's many reasons why uh, the guy at Tottenham's done well. So. Yeah, and he was on our list as well. He was True, on our list yeah. as well, wasn't he? So you know, he was, yeah, absolutely, and. I, th- I think this is this is one. It almost feels like it's important we we nip this in the bud and have just a quick chat about this. You've seen it, no doubt, as well. Because we know it's slot, we're seeing the names from Feyenoord, aren't we? Like Gertrude, Max Vimmer's the other one, or, you know, all these, even Jimenez, I've seen the forward. I think it is important to put this in context. If Edwards, Hughes, Woodfine are doing their job, it's not going to be about former Feyenoord players, is it? It's about, are they good enough? The area divisia, t- we should be... To use a good UP phrase, we should be filtering this list down to practically nothing quite quickly, shouldn't we? Yeah, I I think a lot of this is lazy journalism, and I'll say that, and it's clickbait. Um, I I find it very difficult to comprehend the logic behind us buying from Vinord if we want to make if we want to go top four next year, and we want to improve this side. This side hasn't got a lot wrong with it, by the way. I know I've said I think there'll be yeah. a few changes, but I think that's because it's a change in the of the era. I think yeah. there are some injury concerns that we're going to do a UP pod on to look at. You know, there is a long term impact of having this many injuries this season mm-hmm. for all the player staff. So there's some things around there. And as we always said, this was a, this was actually a transitional season. The fact that we had a chance to win the league and we dropped the ball on it is it, by the by. But fundamentally, the aims of the season was to get top four and maybe win a cup. We've done that. So yeah. We always needed other players to reinforce that. I just don't think we should be getting them from the Dutch league. If you yeah. want to go and have aspirations to, you know, win the league, win Champions League, the rest of it, personally. And that's not, I don't, please don't take that as an insult with Dutch boys out there. Um, it's just, hmm. there is an irreducible tax for a reason. And um, yeah, I think there are some players there that look okay. But I think if we're looking for midfield and forward options, we certainly shouldn't be, I don't think we should be shopping in there at the yeah, indeed. There's there's some stuff to uh, to possibly like around Gertrude, we'll say that, but yeah. we want to, again, not want to hang our, our hats on. There's a lot to be decided there as well. And the final player, which is almost going to sound contradictory to everything we're talking about, Bart, because we're going to stay with the Dutch team, aren't we? So this forward, Somerville, I'm sure people have seen this. Now, this is an interesting one, Bart, as in when you, I looked at it on the surface, and it's funny how you've just linked Dutch to the championship and the area division attacks because... Where is Somerville right now? He's in the championship, but he's the championship player of the season. There's a lot of suggestions in both the UK and Dutch media, especially, that's sort of gone quite hot there, that he is on our radar. And obviously, Ornstein said, we're looking at wide players. This name keeps coming up. I mean, the one thing I found interesting is quite a lot of people, and forgive me up, boys, when I say the stats game, but a lot of people who go into the stats game have mentioned this guy as, having Jota-style qualities as in the numbers and the way it could translate and go up from there. Maybe not supernova to use your terms, but Somerville, Bart, can you make a case? Because I know like you guys, the UP boys, Si, have looked at the numbers. Can we make a case for Somerville coming to Liverpool? I think if we start the same process again, if you look at his uh, last year of data, in comparison to uh, attacking mid-wingers, uh, he is uh, defensively, obviously got, most of these are in actually above 50% percentile, which is good for someone who plays that high. Mm. Aerials, 30% percentile, that might be something to, I mean, not that we do, but that's still an option, that's something to have on the off yeah. to work on. On the ball, in terms of passes, completion, progress, and the rest of it, he is in and around 70 percentile for most of those. His highest one is progressive carries um, and touches in the attacking penalty box. So they're in the 90 percentile. So that tells you that he'd rather carry the ball rather than pass it. Okay, not yeah. bad. That, that's kind of what we want. You know, we want him to make a progressive True. carry, which is generally over 
Uh, it depends on what your definition. My definition generally uh, over 10 metres closer to goal, right? So he's carrying the ball 10 metres closer to goal. It's kind of what you Makes want. sense. And in the attacking uh, two thirds of the pitch. So, all right. In terms of the the goalie stuff, if you like, um, non penalty goals as he as in XG is created is in the ninety second percentile. That's good. You know, non penalty eighty yeah. ninth. Uh, shots total ninety first percentile. So per ninety three point two shots. So right, that's good. So, yeah. Um, Assist point two four, which is seventy third percentile. Which that might be something he needs to. The, they will look at that in terms of can he scale that yeah. up? We want that to be a little bit higher. So non penalty XG and assist together, he's in 94% of which is 0.63 a game. So shot created action, 6.1 uh, a game. Again, so that's in the 97 percentile. So for what he is in comparison to what he's been doing, he's been playing in a championship, he looks like to be a leading light in the championship from, from the day yeah. perspective. I've yeah. not I've not watched a lot of him. Um, I'll hold my hands up because I just don't watch a lot of championship games. And apologies for those who uh, take offence to that, but it's just not what I do. So in terms of his, if you look at that trend, should we say over the, over the period of time? So his xG, if we just look at that per ninety over the last uh, four seasons, for some reason they haven't got him, or oh, he played in the reserves for for Leeds. So his first season in the Leeds uh, four years ago, he, he did point point uh, one four. XG per 90. Yeah. Then he had his season out. I don't I just don't know if he was injured or not, but he played in the in the reserves, right? So mm. I don't recall those stacks. Then he's got a 0.18 uh last season. Yeah. And this season he's 0.43. Wow. So he's doubled his, his XG per 90. Yeah. In terms of his assists, if I mean uh, or shots, should we say? Again, when he first came to Leeds, his average per 90 was, was zero shots, not a great thing. Then Again, that mid-season because he's in the reserves. And then you've got the yeah. uh, season they were in the Prem. He was half a shot yeah. a game. And then his shots in the in the championship have gone up now to 1.2 per, per game. So there is progression there over, over yeah. the trend. So you could potentially argue non-penalty non, uh, non XG has gone from uh, 0.18 last season to 0.32 this year. But again, that's a drop in quality. He's not in the Premiership. He's back in the Championship. So yeah. I think they're going to have to... There is a trend there. I'm not going to lie, but it's whether or not they consider that to be because he's dropped down in quality, or whether they yeah. think he's going to carry that on. I don't know the numbers, uh, the fee involved in this, uh, but it will come down to whether they think they can continue to do that, or oh, and it's worth the money. You know, I, what is it? Yeah. Do you know what the fee being quoted or not? Is it twenty, thirty? I don't know. The, the article seems to suggest, and this could be interesting as well, it was kind of what I was going to steer into with you, because as they say, I mean, you mentioned there the, the goals and assists. He's got 19 goals, nine assists. The, the trend's going upwards. That's great. Leeds are now in the playoffs. They didn't get automatic promotion today. If Leeds don't get promoted, the suggestions are the fee will be somewhere between 20 to 25 because of Leeds' need. However, if they do get promoted to become a premiership club, A, probably less likely to sell, aren't they? And then if they do sell, we're talking 30 to 40. Do you think it could just come to that sort of pricing point and linking it to the data, if it's possible? I did, because he, he plays the same, correct if I'm wrong, does he not play the same side as uh, the other lad at West Ham? Have I got D, that yeah, right? Somerville sort of goes on the left, so sort of Diaz but, right footed goes on the left. Comes so in. you're looking at two players who play in the same area. Mm. And that is very interesting that these two have been linked around the same time. So it looks like, if I was a better man, I would say there were two names on that list that Edwards is drawing up. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a secret third line around that might, yeah. might be completely, might be the actual A banker, should we say, or you know the top class one, and they've got yeah. these two that they're they're valuing up in terms of pay. If, that, if he comes up, I I I think we'll walk away because I think the fee is going to be too much. Interesting. And I suppose the final one I do want to finish on, it's more of a general point because you mentioned him there, but I know we, we've we talked about it. Edwards, we know we felt that's a, a big appointment for the club, the way everything's yeah. been structured now and done. I think just to give context, because we are talking about it, a transfer show, and, and I know you guys on UP have done this great. That is the Edwards model, isn't it? That they will filter down, they will draw up a list of names, it'll eventually get, and that's the right word, filtered down to like two or three. But at the same time, is it fair to say, Bart, because of the way Michael Edwards, the club, operate in that style, don't be surprised if there's maybe the early names aren't 
out there aren't the ones that they go for. There's a secret name, things like that. It will still be using the, the press in the right way for Liverpool, won't it, do you think? 100%. And it, you, all through history, you'll see the games that Edwards plays with the media. I don't know if Hughes is actually technically in charge of it, but yeah. there's still the overarching tactics that he'll lose. The classic one is Ali, right? Literally, where um, what's it, Karras goes out and plays a friendly. Uh, does Paul in Lee. Ward gets not Paul in Lee, apologies. He's still suffering from the, the Champions League, right? So we put Ward in the next game and then we make a yeah, yeah. something on the line. So Ward is our number one. We don't, we know, no idea. We, we don't want to sell him that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. He goes pretty much the next week. So we sell him, but because he said that, we get a higher price. And then we're murmuring around. I can't remember who we were linking to. And suddenly Ali pops up and we get Ali in. And you think we've gone from a position of saying, this is our number one. We, we, don't, we don't need to get another keeper to sending the guy we just said number one and bring mm-hmm. Ali in out of nowhere. So there's there's ways around. I think there's several uh, layers to which Edwards will play this. I don't think the early names are, all, are necessarily the front runners. They might be. There's often the way he phrases things is very much like to protect value mm-hmm. of said player to sell or to undermine to come along. So I think there's lots of things. And if anyone's listened to the last bit on slot, we did at the end of the last pod, looking at how mm-hmm. we would have looked at playing styles and the computer we would use, the, the simulations we would have done for that. It's exactly the same thing when you're play, picking a player. You, They will have the data. I haven't got it here because I, I use public domain data, but they will mm-hmm. fundamentally have a profile of any target they want and go, right, what areas does he play on the pitch? What threat does he have in this area? What possession added does he do? What goal added does yeah. he do? And who does he profile with? Who does it fit to? And that's how they'll filter it down. And it'll be like, wow. and there'll be a point at which they would try and mirror some of these to the way they want, that slot will probably slightly tweak the four three three or four two three one, whichever you want to do, however you want to call yeah. it. But it'll come down to that, and they'll be like, right, okay, so this guy is in the right. This he seems to pick the ball up in the right areas. This is real basic level. They will not be at this basic level. What threat does he do? What does he do with that threat? Can we scale it up? They'll possess and adjust as well because that's what they'll do, and then. From that list, they'll start making the fillers out, and that's where you get some of these noises come out because you know football's football. So you know a lot of it, and as soon as someone says, "Oh yeah, by the way, Liverpool will be on the phone," that some you have to be incredibly secure for it not to suddenly mm-hmm. appear in the media, right? Or it just doesn't care, and it comes out in the media. But you know, it's sort of. I think they will go through that litigious process to make sure that they've matched the data up to who they want, and they'll do a. Uh, then they'll bring in all the other feeds medical finance the rest of it the one how yeah. what his wages is because it's not just about the fee it's about the wages like the biggest you guys me at mo that's the thing that you've also got into a take into account it's spread yeah. about a week yeah so that's a lot of money to be going out of the kitty every single week so there's just two things for that and there's other players as well that i'm sure will consider this book into it to a thing and part of it isn't just the fee it's the fact that a lot of our suppliers have been there for this whole period on the clock and now on substantial wages. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And to be honest, I think with that basis and that context, I think you're spot on. We would not be that surprised to see a, a busier summer, maybe than some people anticipated. It's fair. But, I mean, ladies and gents, look what we've crammed in in this short period. Who, who knew that Kudos gets in the hot zone the right amount of times we like him? Who knew that Gertruda is... Not Kyle Walker quick, but quick. So there's things to like there. Somerville, can he scale up in the same way? Can the, does the championship translate to the Premier League? The Eredivisie attacks makes it level with the championship. What does that translate as ever? So there is a lot to ponder and a lot to consider. And Bart, from me, because I know you are a busy man, thanks very much for giving some time to the, the transfer shows. And who knows, the likes of me and Trev might start talking XG, hot zones and everything in our transfer show in the future. So for your insight, for your take, mate, much appreciated as ever. I know you're a busy man. No worries, dude. Anytime. Good stuff. And ladies and gents, that was the first of hopefully many AI transfer specials. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. 
You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.